Hey everyone, welcome back to the Quartermaster Podcast, and with Ryan Cook and myself, we're going to talk about um, something that's been a lot in the news, Ryan, and this is this whole Corporate Transparency Act that's going on, the CTA, put out by FinCEN. We've already done a session on this already. Matter of fact, we've had a lot of great response uh, to our videos on this here in our podcast, So, but we want to kind of give you an update because there's been some significant changes, and we alluded to those in our last conversation, Ryan, but mm -hmm. uh, what we want to do is give you the more specifics and to make sure that you don't get caught off guard. So yeah. first thing we'll start about is some legislation, pardon me, some, some litigation, not yeah. legislation, litigation that happened. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy whether or not that this is uh, constitutional <laughs> or not right. for the government to be able to peek into your business, ask these questions, do this stuff. Um, and so basically there was a lawsuit that's been brought up uh, by the Small Business Association. National Small, National Business, Small, Business. Small Business Association um, to basically say this is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And uh, what has happened is, is now uh, basically if you were inside of that or a member of that uh, organization, then you no longer now have to file it currently until this becomes resolved. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Now, the key here, Ryan, mm -hmm. is that they had to have had been a member, member. Mm -hmm. prior to March 1st of this year when the Alabama federal court made this decision that it was unconstitutional. Now, there was only two parties to this lawsuit. There was one small business owner uh, or small business and then the National Small Business Association. So the, the key here is that, and what they stated, what FinCEN said, is that um, you had to have been a member prior to that March, March 1st. So 1st. if you if you run out now to say, I want to be a member, it's a great organization. I'm yeah. a member. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of that 65,000. Yeah. But the reality is it's not going to do you a bit of good for this lawsuit. Yeah, so, so you still have to do the BOI report, correct? That is correct, yeah. yeah. And, and as of end of February, uh, the FinCEN had put out that um, there had only been a half a million business owners who had actually completed this mm -hmm. out of 30 Two million small wow. business owners. It's a long way to go. <laughs> that is a long way to go. It's a lot of fun. Now, when I say FinCEN, that is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is from the a Department of the Treasury. So I just want to make sure that when we're saying FinCEN, you understand what we're talking about. Because what they're doing, this legislation mm -hmm. from the get-go, mm -hmm. is to make sure that criminal activity does not um, go to a blind eye. In other words, mm -hmm. meaning that they have the information they need to be able to enforce money laundering and some other Fraudulent financial crimes, yeah, fraud, mm -hmm. yeah. But the, you know, we said this last time, Ryan. The reality is, if you're a criminal, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, this is who you are or what you do. You got these shell companies, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're not going to report anyway. If your job is avoiding uh, the law, then you're going to continue <laughs> to avoid the law. That's that's a tale as old as time, as far as that's concerned. Yep. Uh, criminals don't adhere to laws, even even with new ones being placed. In. That's right. So, so again, just kind of refresh on what the the ruling was. So, uh, starting January first of this year of twenty four through December thirty first of twenty four, you are mandated to report ownership uh, of your LLC. So, if you have an LLC uh, and you're twenty employees mm -hmm. or less, mm -hmm. and you have five million dollars or less in revenue, you are mandated to report this information. And mm -hmm. so if you don't, Ryan, there's some pretty significant uh, repercussions. Yeah, so originally um, you would be, uh, well, there's some civil penalties as far as being uh, fined yep. up to $500 a day. There's also some criminal charges yeah. that can be done um, and even jail time, things like that. But, um, you know, the kicker is, is that, <laughs> that it was $500, but, you know, just like everything, inflation is alive and well. And so, what, Don, what did they raise? $591, I believe so, is what it is. Yeah, so they, they corrected it for you. Yeah. That's what they did <laughs> to make sure that everything is matching inflation. So uh, so now, if you miss that, um, you can get charged up to nine, or $591 a day yeah. for that. Yeah, and that uh, starts, uh, if you haven't done this by December 31st mm -hmm. of this year, then, of course, that, that, that uh, meter, if you've ever been in a taxi, that meter kicks in at 591 a day. Now, they could adjust it again for inflation. Mm -hmm. We just got some inflation numbers this week. Mm -hmm. So they did that on January 25th, where they moved it from 500 to 591, okay? So as, the, as inflation continues to seem like it's creeping up, you, you might see that even go up over $600. And is there a, is there a max? Is it $25,000 or is it? Like uh, max, no, no yeah. max. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> so you want to make sure that that's that that's filed. So that's that's yeah. pretty um, 
pretty disheartening yeah. to think about as far as that goes. Yeah, and, and the thing about it is going back to the, the criminal part of it, there's actually a $10,000 fine, two years in imprisonment. That is for willful um, mm -hmm. violation, violation, meaning that you're, you're intentionally doing it to, of course, obstruct uh, law. Uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. so. Yep. So uh, the Alabama court ruled it unconstitutional. Um, is there a, another date that they're looking at, or do we know yet? Yeah. So shortly after, I think it's about 10 days after mm -hmm. that filing in Alabama, the uh, FinCEN actually filed an appeal, which was no surprise because, you know, they want to get this enforced, even for 65, or pardon me, 65,001 business owners. They want to make sure that everybody adheres to it. So they did file an appeal. Unfortunately, um, for keep in mind here, the appeals process in this particular court could take up to nine months or longer mm. to be able to uh, give this. Now, one thing they did also ask was a stay. A stay, and I'm not here to give you legal advice, but a stay just says, listen, uh, yes, we, are, we recognize that this, this has happened, but we want to put that ruling on a, uh, a pause, meaning that those 65,001 business owners would still have to uh, adhere hmm. because yeah. they realize that, and the state hasn't been ruled on upon yet, but the, the nine months to 12 months, it's going to take you, it happened in March, it's going to take you to December, maybe later yeah. before the appeals process can actually happen. Wow. And uh, other, there's other, some other states that jumped on to making their own <laughs> BOI reports. I think New York uh, was one of them, right? Yeah, New York is uh, so far the only one. I the think there's one. some other states out there Looking uh, on the West Coast, and yeah. I won't name any names, yeah. might participate as well. But yeah, New York actually has put some uh, requirements too. And, and here's the scary thing, Ryan, is as it stands right now, as the rules stand in New York, it's pretty com similar to the federal uh, but a couple things here. There is no criminal aspect to it. Uh, fine, I think it was about two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, as it stands right now, in the ruling that, or pardon me, the the legislation is that it's public knowledge, mm -hmm. not just for law enforcement, like it is for FinCEN. So in the state of New York, as it, until they get this addressed, it currently says that it is public information. So anybody, if you own a business, mm -hmm. can get all that information. Wow. That's, yeah, that is scary. Start stepping into privacy things oh and everything like that. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. Now, I know one of the big um, topics for CPAs and others that were there, too, is whether or not this was a legal practice of law or not. Yeah. Has that been addressed or changed? It really hasn't. You know, FinCEN uh, has said it's not, but FinCEN is not the regulatory. It's just actually the state bar mm. uh, that make that decision. And so... A lot of, in the professional, in the accounting professional, the CPAs, enrolled agents, and different ones who, you know, as FinCEN, you know, you're just reporting financial information and personal information. Mm -hmm. There is a strong case to say that you're act, actually practicing law because you're getting into the LLC, the limited liability corporations, uh, the S Corps and C Corps, you're getting into that territory, mm -hmm. which attorneys guard very you know, close to their, yeah, close yeah. To, their, to their vest. And so they don't want to lose that revenue. So that's a big part of it. Um, so keep in mind, if your CPA, your accountant has not gone through this process of filing for you, that's going to be the, probably the motivating factor other than tax season's coming to an end. They maybe have some time freed up, but just keep in mind that there's a great risk to them of uh, being uh, caught as a uh, you know, un unlawful law. practice yeah. of law. Yeah. And so the state's going to make that decision. So what we decided as a firm, and you certainly can go anywhere you want to, but we actually, with our tax attorneys that we have a, a strong relationship with, we've already created a very easy, easy, easy website uh, that you can click on. There's actually a link here at the end of the, today's show that you can click on and go to. It's inexpensive. It's five hundred dollars. Now you could do this on your own. You could actually go to the FinCEN website and do all this yourself. But if you want to have that peace of mind that's done properly, and you have an attorney review it, then I would, I would strongly encourage you know taking a look at this uh, again. If you can choose to go to your CPA or to your go to your attorney uh, as well. But just know that we have set this link up here to make it real easy. There's 32 million business owners out there now. Ryan, you brought up a good point before the show. That you know, people a lot of times are procrastinators, mm -hmm. and so you know, I mean, what what are your thoughts about that? I mean, as we get further into this year, we we, we talk about this from a tax perspective: is run yeah. to the run to the uh, the doors. Yeah, Johnny Bar the door. Yeah. So with with there being only about um, half a million of biz, half a million businesses that's applied for this so far, and there's 32 million businesses here in the U.S. Um, the closer it gets to to 
the January 1st, you know, it's going to, it's going to be crazy. And it's going to be, you know, everybody's going to be wanting this to get put in. So you run into an issue just like we do during tax season or even with any sort of a amendment or bill that gets delayed. Uh, once it gets passed or once we get confirmation that this is going to happen, it's a flood of different, you know, returns, different processes that go in there. And so this is going to be the same thing for this. So Every, um, you know, you don't want to risk basically waiting till the last minute, having this filed the last minute and potentially having to accrue penalties if it gets in late or, you know, gets done improperly or whatever yeah. the case may be. Well, just so, think about this too, that, you know, we're at $591 if you're, if you go beyond that one day, mm -hmm. does it make sense to spend $500 to just make sure it's done? Yeah. And that way they're, you know, you just save all that extra, extra money. So. Exactly. It could save you a lot of headache and, um, both in the, your heart and wallet. So, yeah, you know, so, yeah. Exactly. exactly. You know, and, and the thing about it is this is just one of those things that we just don't want to wait till the last minute because, you know, like anything else, it gets crazy. So kind of let, let's kind of review over here real quickly some of our takeaways from today's mm -hmm. show. Um, you know, there's five uh, that we have. Uh, what mm -hmm. would you say the first one would be? Uh, just that the federal court in Alabama, you know, they ruled that this was um, in, unconstitutional. And so right now, anybody who is in the uh, National Small Business Association and uh, the one other company, basically uh, 65,000 businesses do not have to adhere to this BOI ruling right now. Um, the other one is, is uh, you know, all those companies, they have to uh, do the reports by January 1st of 2025. Otherwise, that's when they're going to start accruing these penalties by then. No, right. Well, one thing, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but... Uh, one thing we have to keep in mind too that if you created your LLC in 2024, you don't have till the end of the year yeah, to 90 file. Ninety days, it. right? Yeah, ninety days. Ninety that's days. It. Yeah. So make sure that if you created an LLC in this year, that you have, or your attorney, or your CPA, whoever, has made sure that's been filed within that ninety days, or you're subject to that five hundred ninety-one dollar. After the ninety days. After the ninety Ooh. days. Yeah. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't delay on that one there for sure. Um, yeah, and just third that, you know, um, New York, they did their own BOI system, even though it doesn't really have the criminal aspect to the penalties. There is a financial penalty that comes with it if you don't get it turned in. Um, and then... Uh, I feel sorry for the ones in New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, there might be some other states on the West Coast that might be participating. They tend to mirror each other in some aspects. So, so, so uh, just, I'm, I'm, yeah. of course, I had to take this opportunity. Sure. So you're saying, Ryan, mm -hmm. that other states would want to create revenue yep. uh, and a reporting agency, uh, I mean, reporting responsibility to get more money into their pockets? Absolutely, they would. I mean, I, I mean it's just like another tax. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> well, just or tax, potentially another tax. Exactly, just tax us out of poverty. You yeah. know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, uh, you know, fourth is that, you know, they, they uh, were nice enough to adjust uh, for inflation. So now the penalty is no longer $500 a day, but $591. Um, so that's so and, and when you figure up that yeah. dollar figure, Ryan, mm -hmm. what is that? Almost twenty percent. Yes, almost twenty yeah. percent increase in mm -hmm. inflation. So when we talk about going to the grocery store, or paying for gas or utilities or whatever, you, you think that has been high, which it has been. But they put a twenty percent, nineteen, we'll say nineteen percent mm -hmm. increase on top of that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh like I said, it's insane. So the incentive to get this done right and correct is very important exactly. um, as far as that goes. And uh, just lastly, just the last topic is, you know, Vincent has made it clear uh, that these will be taken against uh, willful um, violations of this, basically. So, uh, you know, I, I would assume that a company who, you know, was actively trying not to do this thing or fighting against it, even though that they had to do it, they're the ones that would get this penalty. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. And keep in mind, too, that if you yeah. have created an LLC that has gone dormant mm -hmm. um, or that you just don't utilize anymore, mm -hmm. that does not exempt you from having to file. Wow. So make sure that if you have any LLCs that you've ever created, make sure they've been dissolved properly, number one, because you don't want to have to deal with uh, FinCEN. Uh, say, I thought well, that one there was closed out a long time ago, yeah. or I, I haven't, I forgot about it. I haven't used it in a long time. So if it's been filed, if you filed the LLC at any of the states, 50 states, Puerto Rico and uh, uh, Washington, D.C., you want to make sure. So if you have any questions, go to the state website 
and find out if it's still active. Wow. So if you had like a lawnmower business whenever you were in uh, college and you had an LLC, you need to check on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow. what, a, what a pain. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, for a while there, um, LLCs, that people are slinging those out like candy, you know? Well, while going to YouTube, they yeah. still do it. <laughs> well, I, I was about to say, everybody's like, LLC this, LLC that, you yeah. know? And so people are creating LLCs. I mean, yeah, so if you are, uh, you might want to go check some of those old ones that you got. <laughs> So, exactly. for sure. Well, well, listen, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we want to bring you great value for your business, making sure you're compliant, but more importantly, is helping you keep more of what you make. That's really what we're all about here at Quartermaster. Uh, if you want some information, we have a white paper uh, that goes through what we talked about today. Just all you do is click below. Also, remember that if you want to make sure you're compliant with the FinCEN requirement, we have a special link that our legal team has created. And that way there, you can get it real done, done real easily, real inexpensively, and make sure that you don't have to deal with that $591 yeah. a day. Or maybe more. Or more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks again. Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.